Do people with scoliosis live shorter lives? Typically, idiopathic scoliosis can be highly treatable, particularly with early detection and intervention. The more severe scoliosis is, the more capable it is of causing complications. And the longer a scoliosis is left untreated or not treated proactively, the more likely it is it impact a person's health, quality of life, and potentially longevity. Now, we know scoliosis means being diagnosed with an unnatural sideways bending curvature that also twists and rotates into the concavity. And this curves develop for many different reasons. And being diagnosed with scoliosis means a lot of uneven forces are being introduced into the body and the body's developing around the scoliosis if this is happening in early stages of life during growth. Scoliosis diagnoses are typically made through a physical examination and taking an x-ray to actually measure something called the Cobb angle. Now we know scoliosis is a progressive condition, meaning it's its nature to worsen over time. And scoliosis can range from mild to moderate to severe to very severe scoliosis. And this is typically a result of the Cobb angle measurement, meaning the bigger the angle, the more severe the scoliosis. Also, when we look at scoliosis, we look at something called typical curvatures. And typical curvatures are ones that we typically associate with something called an idiopathic scoliosis condition, meaning unknown cause. These are normal, healthy patients. And for whatever reason, something's happening that's causing the scoliosis to develop. However, there is something called an atypical scoliosis. And we know atypical scoliosis cases are more associated with more severe conditions. And they can be associated with neuromuscular conditions. And these neuromuscular conditions can affect the quality of life and life expectancy. Because we know the scoliosis is related to an underlying neuromuscular condition, these neuromuscular conditions can affect other systems of the body and cause scoliosis. So therefore, they normally tend to cause a more severe scoliosis condition. And because of these complications combined, it's more likely to cause more significant effects. Now, what are some other effects that could be associated with scoliosis? We know scoliosis can affect digestive function, and this can happen as a result of many different reasons, but we can think it because because of the shortening of the torso, it could be because of nerve involvement, it could be because of lack of flexibility in the spine, which can lead to immotility in digestive organs but we know it's definitely associated. We also know scoliosis, if it becomes severe, can lead to lung restriction. And this can happen in very severe cases because if there's a thoracic curve, it can start affecting the way the lungs are developing and working. We also know scoliosis can impact the person's quality of life by affecting their posture and their symmetry and can lead to pain. But we know most of the time scoliosis isn't always considered a life-threatening condition. What tends to be, what, what tends to affect a person's life expectancy is really how scoliosis is managed and treated. And when you look at scoliosis, it's really treated in two specific ways. It's considered to be treated with a non-surgical conservative treatment model or invasive traditional surgical treatment models. And, it's the, it's, and when we look at invasive surgical treatment, it's really inconsistent to understand what are the mortality rates associated with surgical treatment. But we know there is mortality rates associated with this type of surgery because the surgery is a very invasive treatment that involves spinal fusion. And even even though the rates of complication could vary highly and how surgery uh, mortality is actually reported. But we know this will vary based upon number of variables like patient's age, condition, severity, the number of vertebrae fused, the location of, this, of the surgery, and of course, the skill of the surgeon. So the best way to treat scoliosis and to avoid any risk associated that we look with spinal surgery is more conservative treatment options. But conservative treatment options, there's never guarantee associated with treatment options, but we know these are safer, meaning there's less risks associated with the treatment itself, especially when scoliosis treatment is done at early time of diagnosis. When we treat curves conservatively when they're mild, you're more likely to get a positive treatment outcome than letting curves progress into severe levels where they're causing increasing effects and then trying to treat the curve conservatively. Now, unfortunately, many patients I treat are severe level scoliosis cases that we treat conservatively to reduce their curve below surgical levels, but treating curves smaller in the same person is much preferred. Conservative treatment option typically combines the power of many different types of conservative treatments. And all of these conservative treatments have a very low risk associated with it. A condition-specific chiropractic that's associated in providing uh, adjustments to the spine to help improve the shape of the scoliosis. 
active and passive physical therapy in the office to help help traction and move the spine into a straighter position, corrective bracing to help remodel the torso into a straighter and more symmetrical alignment, rehabilitation and home therapy that are improving the spinal muscles and tissues to help improve endurance and flexibility. And all of these things impact the scoliosis in a structural level with the lowest possible risk and the best possible chance of improving quality of life. So we know scoliosis itself normally isn't considered a life-threatening condition. And this is especially true when it's responded with conservative proactive treatments that's normally done in a mild stage. Scoliosis is always treatable in conservative approaches in the majority of cases. However, scoliosis can start affecting life expectancy when scoliosis becomes very severe, when there's an un atypical scoliosis associated with other types of neuromuscular conditions, or when scoliosis is left untreated or treated with a, an invasive surgical treatment where the surgery possibly could affect life expectancy or longevity. So therefore, I would recommend that we treat patients with conservative treatments as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.